We got Mr. Everything English and in this video we are continuing with the series on paper 2. So far we've covered paper 2 question 1, paper 2 question 2 and paper 2 question 3. In this video we are going to be looking at paper 2 question 4. So I advise you guys if you have not already pause this video, go back and watch them and then come back to this particular video. Now all the resources that you need to work with me are in the description box for the question paper and the insert paper. And finally, guys, before I begin, I hope home learning is going well for all of you. And if you haven't already, do click subscribe and do follow the Instagram and the TikTok page, Mr. Everything English. All right, guys, without further ado, let's begin. So question four, paper two is a 16 mark question. Now for a 16 mark question, we are looking to spend 16 minutes, maybe 17, give or take a minute here and there, depending on how fast you completed one, two, and three. But the general rule of thumb is 16 marks for question four. Now for this particular question, you are aiming for three really good paragraphs. Three really good paragraphs. At a push, if you're really, really fast, then four. If you're somebody who's able to produce more than four paragraphs, then I would really question the detail and the quality that you are writing at. But three paragraphs is enough as long as there are three really good quality paragraphs. Now, what's the question that we are working on? I'll read it out for you guys. For this question, you need to refer to the whole of source A together with the whole of source B. So it's a two source question and we're not looking at specific lines. We are looking at the entire source A and the entire source B. Now, here's the question, guys. Compare how. What does it mean when examiners say how? How is looking at, well, let's read the question first. Compare how the writers convey the similar perspectives on cycling in the city. Compare how the writers convey the similar perspectives of riding in the city. Guys, the how here is referring to language and structural devices. How do the writers use those things to convey, to show their similar viewpoints on cycling in the city. So we are comparing language devices. We are comparing structural devices. And then the question reads, in your answer, you could compare the similar perspectives on cycling in the city, compare the methods and support your answer with reference to both texts. Now, the first thing we need to do is go back to the sources, source A and source B. And we have to first find a similar point of view in both of the sources. So you must find some evidence in the evidence, there must be a how, meaning there must be a language device or there must be a structural device worth just talking about. Let's start with source A, guys. On source A, guys, can you all look at lines 44 and 45? And I will read it to you guys. But most of all, remember that these are human beings, unprotected flesh and bone seeking to get to work, to see their friends and to return to their loved ones. Now, on what I've written on my pages, um, I've highlighted or I've circled, get to work, see their friends and return to their loved ones. And the language device that I want to focus on is rule of three. And what's my point here? Here, I want to say that the writer's perspective of cycling in the city is like life and death. That if they don't be careful, if the people don't be careful on the streets, then these cyclists may not see their loved ones. They may not see their friends and they may not see their families. So that's my point on source A. I've got my quote, I've got my how, which is the rule of three, and I've got my perspective on cycling the city. Now I know that when I look at source B, I have to find a similar point, meaning I must find in source B about how cycling can be quite life-threatening. Now, the quote that I would like to use, guys, is on line 10, 11, 12. On line 12, um, I launched my little bicycle early one Sunday morning in July into the stormy oceans of Sloan Street. Stormy oceans of Sloan Street, it is a metaphor. And the idea of the stormy oceans is the idea that cycling is life-threatening because the same way a storm threatens a boat on the ocean, a ship on the ocean is the same way a driver threatens the cyclist on the streets. And that is the parable that I would like to use. So I have for source A, rule of three, I have a quote, and my point is that it is life-threatening. For source B, I have my point, 
it's life-threatening. I have my quote and I have my how, which is the metaphor. Now, obviously guys, I did that once. I did that once. On the board, I wanna show you guys how you plan this question. Just give me one second. So on the board, I have planned what we just spoke about. So I did one plan for one paragraph. You wanna basically produce three of these for three paragraphs. So my first paragraph is going to be talking about that the similarity is that cycling is life-threatening. Here is my quote. From source A, I have this particular quote. From source B, I have this particular quote. My technique is rule of three and metaphor. And at this point, after talking about this top half, I then will do my explanation. Now I'm not going to plan that because I will show you that once I start writing out the paragraph. So guys, essentially we are doing a peat paragraph and then we go up and we compare and then we do another paragraph. That is one paragraph. So guys, I'll, hold on, let me be a little bit clearer because even I don't understand what I just said. We are doing three paragraphs. This on the board is one paragraph. We are comparing. So we do one peat paragraph. Point, evidence, technique, explain. After we've explained, then we'll say, similarly, in source B, cycling is also life-threatening. And then we go again, and then we end the paragraph. In our explanation, we are going to be talking about the methods and comparing how they are linking to our points. But that will make more sense once I produce the paragraph on the board. But guys, essentially, this is how you are planning. We're not doing pretzel, we're not doing pita, we're not doing peel, we're not doing potato. We are doing peat and then compare, new paragraph, repeat, new paragraph, then repeat. Simply because we haven't got time to be zooming in. We haven't got time to be going in that kind of detail because we're comparing as it is. All right, guys, at this point, I'm going to switch the board and I'm going to type up the answer. So essentially, I'm going to type up this paragraph for you all to see. Now, as the video is going on, you may have questions. If you do have questions, drop them in the comment box and we can talk about this after the video. Guys, let me switch the screen one more time. On the board, I'm going to produce the answer I just planned. Now, essentially, you're looking at five, five and a half minutes per paragraph, which is very, very easy to do because considering my point and my evidence and my technique are already done and they should take no more than 30 seconds. The majority of my time should be spent on my two explanations. Now guys, on the board, I'm gonna type up the answer that we just planned. Feel free to copy it as I go along because it may be good for you guys to have this written down as a kind of base paragraph to refer to when you begin to do your own. Both source A and source B. Cycling is presented far from a hobby. Rather, it is presented as a tangible threat to human life. That's my point complete, guys. This can be seen in source A when the writer explains how all cyclists want is to get to work to see their friends to return with the loved ones. One second, guys. Uh, the use of the rule of three is extremely effective as it pulls on the reader's emotions. Furthermore, it emphasizes how cycling can also be compared to warfare. The concerns raised 
written by the rule of three. That concerns you would expect a soldier in the battlefield to have, not a commuter embarking on their journey. Furthermore, this idea is similarly echoed in source B when the writer describes the roads as stormy oceans of Salon Street. The metaphor the metaphor again highlights the danger which awaits these cyclists. The way storm can destroy a ship is how cars can destroy Even though both writers use varying language devices, they both similar outcomes. Not only do they present cycling and life threatening but they also pull on the readers. And guys, there you have it. There is a paragraph that I've just written out. Now, forgive me, guys, if there's any spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes when I'm typing. Um, I'm kind of just kind of typing like mad. But let's go over the paragraph. Now, you're looking to produce um, three of those paragraphs. Um, it took me, I think, approximately five minutes, five and a half minutes, which is the time I would have in my exam. And obviously, guys, with practice, the timing will get better. Now, let's read over what I've written. In both source A and source B. Now, the reason I began with in both source A and in both source B is because we are doing a similarity. So I want to bring it together from the very beginning. Cycling is presented far from a hobby. Rather, it is presented as, tang as a tangible threat to human life. So, guys, it should be as a tangible threat to human life. Tangible means real. It's not a fake threat, it's a real threat. This can be seen in source A when the writer explains how all cyclists want is to get to work, to see their friends and to return to their loved ones. Now guys, the first thing you want to notice is I've embedded my quote. I've not just put a full stop and then a random quote. I've embedded my quote into my writing. So let me just tweak this guys. Okay, let's continue. 
The use of the rule of three, I've gone straight in there. The use of the rule of three is extremely effective as it pulls on the reader's emotions. Furthermore, it emphasizes how cycling can also be compared to warfare because the concerns raised by the rule of three, meaning will I see my friends, will I see my family, will I see my loved ones, are the same concerns you would expect a soldier in the battlefield to have, not a commuter embarking on their journey. So I've done my source A. I've given my explanation. The reason, like, I look, there's so much more detail I can go into, but I can't sit on source A because I've got to get to source B for my work to be a comparison. Hence, we move on. Furthermore, this idea is similarly echoed in source B when the writer describes the roads as the stormy ocean of Sloan Street. The metaphor again highlights the danger which awaits the cyclist. The way a storm can destroy a ship is how cars can destroy a cycle. Now, I kind of bring everything together. Even though both writers, even though both writers, even though both writers use varying language devices and metaphor and rule of three, they both have similar outcomes. Not only do they present cycling as life-threatening, but they also pull on the reader's emotions, line by line, word by word. And all I will do, guys, is then I will say, furthermore, and then I'll do paragraph two, and then I'll do paragraph three. Now, in my opinion, guys, three paragraphs are sufficient. Now, guys, this is an exemplar paragraph. If I can produce three of these in about 16 minutes, you are looking at between 15 to 16 marks for this particular question. Okay, guys, so that brings us to the end of section A. We've now covered question one, question two, question three, and question four. For all these four questions, we are looking at spending 45 minutes. In the next video, guys, we're going to move on to the big boy, the big daddy, question five. Why did I say that? Uh, but anyway, we're going to move on to question five. Question five is worth 40 marks and we spend 45 minutes on this question. Now, um, do look out for those videos, guys, because they would probably be in a two part video because question five is such a big question. I may split it over two videos just so you don't get bored watching a half an hour, 45 minute video covering an entire question. Now guys, when it comes to question one, question two, question three, question four, I hope you found these videos beneficial. Any questions, guys, do let me know in the comment section. Message me on Instagram, email info at mrevthingenglish.com. As always, guys, if you don't know, now you know, I offer online lessons. So if you ever want to join any of my lessons, do get in touch. I will end the video here, guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Peace.